It's nice to be here once more on this, this Sabbath day, my first Sabbath morning since this COVID pandemic. And I must say, I appreciate the music, amen? amen. Glenn Dean, that was a welcome for me. Musicians, thank you very much. How great is our God. He's awesome. He's all together. I was waiting for you to ask me, you know. I was going to say, he's all together lovely. Amen. It's just great being in the house of the Lord to worship him this morning. Um, as indicated on your bulletin, those of you who do not have a bulletin, we will be considering developing the hidden you. Developing the hidden you. And you heard our text, was, it was read by Brother Tate this morning, so I will not read it again until we continue in with the presentation. So, let us pray. How great is our God, sinful being as we are, we still have access to your throne room only because of Jesus. And for this, we thank you. So as we worship you now, we pray that our worship will be acceptable in your sight. Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning. So that as a result of coming here, those who are listening will commit themselves to you. Because you are God, you are so lovely, you are awesome, you are marvelous, you are wonderful, and you deserve our praise. So help us, Lord, as we listen. Holy Spirit, take control, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. It's always good to consider the context of the text which we are considering. It is a prayer from Paul on behalf of the Christians of Ephesus. This prayer begins with a transition from the first half of his letter, which focused on ideas, to the second half of Ephesians, where those ideas are put into practice. The natural theme for this transition is an appeal for spiritual strength from God. And in this climate of this COVID pandemic, we all need strength from God. Those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior from sin, we ourselves find ourselves wondering, God, what is going on here? What can I do? I'm so down. I don't feel like doing nothing for you. I'm afraid to go out. Lord, what is happening? This morning, I want to tell you there is hope. There is hope because of the blood of Jesus. There is hope. There is hope. So, he said that, it is all about spiritual strength. And this spiritual strength comes from God. God, why did you give us this strength to accomplish the purpose for which we have been created? The purpose for which we have been created is actually what we are talking about this morning, discovering your potential, discovering the hidden you. Our fullest potential will not be realized in this life, but we can reach a limit where we know that God's name will be glorified. And this is the whole purpose God called us. God created us so that we can give him the glory. So to know our potential, it's very important. So even if you're feeling down, now many of us are, many people are having sad, seasonal, affective disorder. They don't feel like going anywhere. They're just feeling down and, and the whole world is not motivated to do anything. I am telling you this morning that you can still fulfill God's potential for your life. First, we have to establish what is this potential. 
When we speak of the word potential, it refers to a dormant ability, an reserved power, untapped strength, hidden <clears throat> talents, unused success. This is what we're talking about. So even if you have achieved, you have not reached your potential. Hello? Hello? Why? Because your potential is all you can be and not yet have become. Ooh, hello? So those of you who have arrived, you think you have arrived. I am saying according to God's word this morning that you still have something for him to do. And the only purpose he has called us to do it is so that we can give him the glory. Your potential is all you can be, but have not yet become. Amen. So if you are saying that, and you have accomplished something as great and as good as it is, it is no longer your potential. Amen. Thank you. So what is the source of our potential? Your potential now is to do something beyond what you have already done. You think you have achieved. I've been working all, the, all these years with the Lord. I've done A, B, C, and D. I can retire. No, no, no. With God, there is no potential retirement plan. There is no retirement plunging plan. Once you are upon this earth, God expects you to give him the glory. God expects you to impact others' lives so that his name will be glorified. So, your potential can never settle for what is accomplished because one of the enemies of potential is success. One of your enemies of potential is success. And it is important that we bear that in mind because many times we have arrived. <laughs> we think we have arrived. But we still have, God still, God still have something to do. So what is the source? Where do we get this source from? Let us go right back to the beginning. In the beginning, in the beginning, God. Where is the source of our potential? God. Why? Because God created you. But before God created you, as we established in our lesson this morning, in the beginning, God. That means God was before the beginning. God was before the beginning. So, before God is, God was. Have mercy. That, that, that's a mystery. That's, that's why, that's why we, we're looking at this, this text here. This is our, our memory text. Because some of the, this in this verse here, um, Ephesians chapter 3. Keep your finger there. Keep your finger there. Because in, in chapter 3, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery from the beginning of all ages. From the beginning of all ages. And you know this God we serve, brethren. He, he, I'm going to repeat myself. He is more than awesome. Why? Because when God created, when God created man, he spoke to himself. He said, what did he say? Let us. All right. When God created the fishes, he said, let the water. Yeah, you're looking at me as you know what you're talking about. Genesis chapter 1. Let's, let's look at chapter 1. Because I want you to see that the source is so important. Everything that was created depended on the source. Yes? So, when we look at Genesis and you look at verse, God said, um, then said, let the earth bring forth what? Grass. God said, let the waters bring forth fish. Then he said, let us. And God spoke. So everything that was created came from the source. And our source is? Amen. Our source is God. So 
in John 1, John, St. John, chapter 1, 1 to 4, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> he was where? He was in the beginning with God, and all things were created, and without him, <laughs> and then verse 4 says, in him was life. So when God said, let us make man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they created us. And therefore, in order for us to reach our potential, we need to have connection with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you want to reach or fulfill your potential, you want to do much more, you need to appreciate that when the foundation of the world, God had a plan. God created you. You are unique. Say that. Tell the person next to you that you are unique. You are unique because you are the only person can do what God created you to do. Nobody else can do it. So when we see people up here and they want to sing or like Glendin and the musicians, and you can't do that. Is that your gift? You are unique. And, and I, I'm looking at the drummer because I really enjoy drumming, but I could never drum like you. I could never do that. You know what I mean? I can't. So it is important then for us to, God, you know, sometimes I feel real tired, but what do you want me to do? Ask him. And why we need to ask him? Because Jeremiah, Isaiah 43, 7. Isaiah 43, 7. Let's look at Isaiah 43, 7. Isaiah 43, 7. Everyone who is called by my name, whom, whom what? I have created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. And Jeremiah 29 went on to say, I know the plans I have for you. Only God alone knows those plans. Nobody else, no elder or nobody, only God. And you need to ask him, God, what it is you want me to do? This is the only way. Do not depend on any nominating committee or any committee to tell you what you're supposed to do. If you have a relationship with God, he will reveal it to you. And you know, God, God is awesome. Excuse me if I have to say this all the time. God is awesome. God has got a revealed will. And he also has a secret will. What I am talking about. Sometimes we are doing something and God tells us to do it. And we be doing it. But there are multiple challenges and, 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 and trials, and oh my God, you want to God, is it really you? Like Joseph. <laughs> like Joseph. That God, Joseph, realized, you know what? My, I was brought up in a home where I was told about the love of God. And Joseph was determined, whatever, he will be obedient to God. And many times we are in that position. We don't know what the outcome will be. But we know when we surrender, when we are obedient, when we trust God, when you have faith in him, we know that we will see the secret will of God. And Joseph did. Joseph saw the secret will. And many times we're going through things, challenges, trials, we don't know. But just hang in there. Because at the end, you will realize, oh yes, God, this is what it was all about. God, you know what? As a result, I have got stronger. My relationship with you is strengthened. I have grown to know you. I know who you are, God, because of my experiences, my trials with you. That is secret will. So when we are going through, as, as Brother Kabambi said this morning, don't always blame Satan. Forget him. God, what? He said, come now, let us reason. 
And sometimes we need to have a serious chat with God. God, what is going on here? I cannot see. Why are you allowing this? He, he asks us, come, let us reason. Talk to him. If you have a relationship with him, you'll feel comfortable talking to him like that. Although he is God. But let us go back to this, this source. So I am saying according to God's word that because God created us, he has got a plan for us. He knows. He gave us the abilities. He gave us all the knowledge and everything so that we can realize our potential. And our potential is always not for self, but to give God the glory, to impact the lives of other people. So it is important then for us to realize that we all have potentials because God created us and he has put within us this unique task for each one of us. Isn't that nice? I think it's so lovely. I, I really think God is awesome. So, um, Yvonne Cummins, what are you doing? I can do and I won't even try. Don't go there. Don't go there at all. But we have to remember, too, that who we are. We are sons and daughters of God. We are royalty. And therefore, he has called us to show forth your darkness. Show forth Second, Second Peter 2, 9. That's the text I'm trying to remember. For you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show for the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is your focus of your potential. Really manifesting the love of God. Really letting others know. So when we are saying that we are followers of Christ, it's okay for us to say that. But we must be accompanying what we are saying with action. Because love is action. Jesus Christ came. And as a result, he demonstrated his love to us. John 3, 16, he died on the cross. He came to restore us. Because as our lesson said this morning, remember, we were in the garden. They had no sin. We didn't sin. But then when sin entered, God in his love and mercy decided to send his only son to restore us. And as a result of that, we now can fulfill the potential. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would never have the opportunity, the power, the power to fulfill our potential. Why? Because he said, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. And comforter is the Holy Spirit who will, who will teach us and guide us into all truth, who will convict us of sin, of righteousness, and judgment to come. The Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit infusing us, anointing us, we will not be able to live to our full potential. You know, many people think they can do so. But when we're talking about potential, we have to consider where we came from. God created us. So there must always be some spiritual dimension when we are talking about our potential. So our potential is what God created us to do for him. And it's not only one. There are many but he takes us through our trials to develop our character so that we can accomplish his purpose for our lives. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. We, God is our potential. Our potential is in God. And in order for us to fulfill that, we must be connected to him. Amen? Amen. We must be connected. So when they're telling us, you have to read your Sabbath school lesson, you have to do, all God is telling us, if you study your word, 
When time comes, I will be able to bring it to your remembrance so that you will be able to recall it. Study the word so that as we build and maintain our connection with the source, we will be able to show forth his praises. We will be able in whatever situation we find ourselves to tell someone about his promises. I will never leave you or forsake you. He said that. He said that when we walk through the valley of the shed, that he will be with us. Why are you so, what's going on here? He has got a plan for us. And I want you to remember that when we're thinking of the source, do not think that it is me, it is my, I can do it. No, no. Oh, I don't know how much time I have, but I'm going to end soon. I'm going to end soon because that clock there. It is therefore <laughs> potential for each one of us. God's potential. He is the one who gave us the potential. Therefore, we need to stay connected. We need to be reconnected so that we can know what his, his will for our lives. All the education, hello? All the education and training. <laughs> this, although it is good. But it does not reveal who God is. All the education. And you're saying, what nonsense? No, I'm not talking nonsense. Let me tell you something that I was taught. And I guess many of you have, have known about Maslow hierarchy of needs. Is it sound familiar? Yes. yes. Now, when we look at Maslow hierarchy of needs, they tell us it's a pyramid, right? And they said, you have to meet the bottom, and work your way up, right? So you have to get all your, your psychological, your, your food, and then you go to security, then you go to belonging and love, and then you go to self-esteem, um, and then you go to self-actualization. You know what this thing self-actualization is? This thing is meeting your full potential. How on earth you are telling me that I need to work my way up for me to get, no. What did the Bible say? Seek ye. Seek ye first. So sometimes this learning is foolishness. Seek ye first the kingdom. Matthew 6 to the 3. And everything else will be added. So when they're telling us, you have to start from the bottom. And this is why many of us, do not really want to do what God is calling us to do. Because we think, you know, if I put God first, what will happen? I won't be able to... I, what about the, the, my telephone bill and my electric bill I have to pay? I, I, I can't do that. So you know what? I will go and work another job. <laughs> Self, you know. Self, you know. Without faith, it is impossible to feed. It without faith... This, this Christian walk, we have to have faith, not in man and their theories, but in the living God. God who created us, who loved us so much, and in loving kindness, he's drawing us to himself. This is the God. So do not, when we hear some of these theories, it's good for us to apply it to pass our exams. But in order to walk this Christian walk, some of this thing is utter foolishness. He told us, seek ye first. They're telling me that I have to love and belong before I could reach. Well, if I love and belong, I will never reach there. <laughs> Discovering your potential is only God and God alone. So when God calls you to do something, remember, sometimes we think where yeah, this thought came from. But if you think of it or if you thought of it, you can do. Hello? Because as a man thinketh, <laughs> you are thinking that you want to be a counselor one day. God Place that in your mind, else you would never, especially if you have a relationship and you're staying connected. Whatever God calls you to do, you can do it because you are being controlled, you are being led, you are being guided by him. Do not allow other 
people to dictate to you what God is calling you to do. Do not follow the wisdom of the world. Think of something that you, you have been thinking. Now we're coming to the end of the year. A lot of us are saying, oh, I fail. I wanted to do this in 21, but I didn't do it. It's not a failure. Sometimes it's God's timing. It's not a failure. So now you're looking at 22. You're saying, what can I do in 22? Think of it. Where did that thought come from? Is it in accordance with thus saith the Lord? That is important. Sometimes we hear all kinds of voices. But when the voice is confirmed with the Bible, we know that the source is from God and God is calling us so that we can live lives to demonstrate who he is. Glorify his name so that he can be his love. All his attributes can be revealed. To close, to close, I'd like to end with a story. Her name is Martha Berry. Martha Berry was an old woman who didn't have much money. And Martha had a vision. She had a vision for children, especially poor children. So she had no books. She had, no, she did, she had a building that was an old building, not suitable for children's education. So one day, the voice came to her. She had this passion. She said, you know what? I'll go to Mr. Henry Ford. You know who Henry Ford is? Yeah. I'll go to Henry Ford and explain my situation and ask for a donation. Well, Martha Berry went. Now we're talking about doing God's will, eh? And our potential, right? So Martha very went, and when she told him, Mr. Ford decided to give her a donation. He went into his pocket, and he took out a dime, and he gave it to her. Now, I'm talking about Henry Ford, who is the billionaire, the Ford cars. That's the guy I'm talking about. He, he gave her a dime. Now, if it was me... <laughs> And I let him know, you keep your dime. Because I come here to help people. No, Martha Mary didn't do that. She was not insulted. Martha Mary knew that God was calling her to do something. She knew her potential was to help these children. You know what Martha did? Martha went and bought packs of seeds with the dime. And year after year, she sold the produce that she had enough money to buy the old building that the school children were housed. So she went back to Mr. Ford to thank Mr. Ford for the dime. Would you have done that? Not at all. <laughs> but she went back. She went to him. And she said, this is what Mr. Ford was so impressed, he wrote out a check, not for one dollar, not for ten dollars, not for five thousand dollars. Where am I going? One million. That's right. One million. She had a vision. And she thought, God, whatever you send in my path, I will be able to work with it because it is your will for my life. What about you? What do you hold in your hands? What gifts, abilities? What are you doing for the Lord so that you can manifest his praises? You can tell others, I have been there, but now I'm here, but... For the grace of God, amen, amen, amen. So as I close today, I want to make an appeal. I want us, as we look forward to the new year, sufficient are the cares for today. But if you are asking God, God, what would you like me to do? Please ask him, talk to him. You will find he will give you an answer. When he gives you the answer, you start praying, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. 
write out a plan, present it to him, ask him for help, everything that you know you need to fulfill this plan. Our God is a God who hears and answers prayers. Our God is a God who, when we call, he will answer. And even while we're yet praying, he will hear. Our God is a God who is a God of time. Sometimes we have our plans and he said, okay, wait, wait, wait. But he will come through, especially when it is in accordance to his word. So this morning, I'm closing now. I'm closing now. This morning, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you, like myself, to believe in the potential, in my potential, in your potential, because without human potential, without godly purpose, if our potential do not have a godly purpose, it leads to self-destruction. God created us. He made us. He gave us a plan. He had this ingrained in us. And now that we have been created, his all, our only purpose is to sing forth his praises. Wishing is not enough. His own life, he sent his son so that we can have the power, the Holy Spirit, this omni always potent, powerful God, he sent his son so that together, working, we will be able to reach our full potential here on this earth so that when we go to heaven, we will indeed reach our fullest potential in Jesus' name. So where do we stand? Where do you stand? Today, I want you to take some time to reflect what God has placed in your heart. He said, brother, sister, those on the line, he's telling us, seek me first, the kingdom of heaven, and everything else will be added. Why? Because I created you. I, I am the source of your potential. So my appeal to you this day is for you to get connected. And stay connected to him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remembering to pray. Remembering to study your word. Remember to witness. So that as he, he sends these trials, our characters will be chiseled and molded after his divine likeness. Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning. And perhaps we might be saying, I am thine, O Lord. Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning. Lord, I want to make a commitment. So draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Lord. Draw me. Or perhaps you might be saying, Lord, I, I, I don't know what to do, but I want to commit myself to you today so that you can reveal to me what is my potential so that your name can be glorified. The only way we can fulfill, the only way we can communicate with our source is through Jesus. So we have to believe in Jesus. We have to have that faith in God. We have to trust and obey. Because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. And when we are doing God's potential, we are happy. Amen, Glendine? Amen. We are amen. So, and as a result of surrendering ourselves to him, we can say, I'm pressing on <laughs> the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying. I said, Lord, plant my feet. Is that your desire this morning? Is that your desire? I am making an appeal, Holy Spirit, talk to us this morning. So that as we leave this church today, it will not just be another Sabbath service. But we leave here with one determination, Lord, to commit ourselves to you. Glendine, come. 
and the team come because I'm going to use this as an appeal song. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord. Hymn number 625 says, I'm pressing on the upward way. Let's sing together. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining. New heights I'm gaining. Every day. Every day. Still praying out. Still praying out. I'm onward bound. I'm onward bound. Lord God, my feet. Can we go straight to verse 2? My heart has no desire. My heart has Is that your desire? Is that your desire today that you are asking God, plant my feet on higher ground? If it is, I would like you to stand. If you do not mean it, please remain seated. But if you really want to stay connected so that God's will and purpose for your life be realized, can you please stand? I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, is that your desire? I'll call our first elder to pray for the commitment that we are making now. Please. Let us pray. Our gracious God and our loving Father, such a mighty God you are, such an enabling God. Father, we recognize that it is not it is not about our abilities. It is all about our availability. And as we avail ourselves, gracious Father, we recognize that you will give us the ability. Because outside of you, we we are not able to do anything. We are not able to accomplish anything. We are so glad, loving Lord, that in your word you have uh, highlighted that we must seek you first. And then everything else will be added to us. So, Father, we, have, uh, we are standing uh, um, uh, this afternoon in commitment 
we have decided, Lord, to go all the way with you as you lead. We are covenanting with you, gracious Father, to be available to you. We are covenanting, Lord, um, to have you enabling us to reach our full potential. Loving Father, we recognize that we are instruments in your hands. And as instruments, Father, some of us are new instruments. Some of us are tried and tested instruments. Some of us are instruments that gave us certain sound. But Lord, when we are available to you, whatever instruments we are, we will make the right sound. And so, Father God, we pray that your, your spirit will fill us today. May we receive the power that comes from contact with you. And loving Lord, as a result, we will electrify the community that we live. And all those with whom we come in contact, loving Lord, will experience that spark. So take us now, seal our commitment. This is my prayer in the mighty, powerful, enabling name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.